What's up, guys? The uh, the attendance was 20,067 sold out. Gate was 16.5 million, third highest gate in UFC history. Fight of the night was Gaethje versus Holloway. Um, performance of the night was uh, Yuri and Holloway. Holloway wins $600,000, well deserved. I guess Dana just, I mean, normally we don't spend too much time on bonuses, but knowing that they were 300 grand a piece, I mean, it was a little more difficult tonight figuring out where to assign that money. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't difficult at all. I mean, if you were watching these fights tonight, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty, pretty clear. But this was one of those special nights. Obviously, uh, I'm going to take care of Figueredo. I'll take care of uh, uh, Moicano, Diego, Kayla. Take care of those guys, too. We're going we're gonna to make sure everybody leaves here in a good mood and feeling like they, uh, they got what they deserved. Nice. Well, you set out to make this the greatest night in combat sports history. I mean, I, mean, I did. We're, we're the bells and whistles, guys. We, we do all the – and then once they, they, you know, the show starts, it's out of our hands and it's up to them. And when you have a night that looks like the greatest night ever in combat sports on paper and then – absolutely fucking delivers it's the best well talk about uh i mean a lot to talk about but i guess let me just start with max holloway the six hundred thousand dollar winner i mean can he's you out the he's outside right now on the phone with justin gaethje right now we were talking to gaethje on the phone and holloway walked out and they're both talking on the phone right now and fucking holloway is walking holloway is walking nobody nobody yeah that's no? crazy those leg kicks were insane he had a there isn't anything big enough on the fucking table here to show you how the, 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 the thing coming out of the side of his leg was 3D, you know, and, and he's walking. And when you think about when we were sitting in that room and we created the BMF, we came up with that. Tonight, totally embodied what that belt was built for. And there should be a picture of that fight in the fucking dictionary when you look up BMF. Yeah. It was, it was incredible. I was going to ask you. The it, and I don't know if you noticed this and if it happened to you guys, too, but that fight sucked the fucking life out of everybody tonight. I was right like, oh. everybody was the next two fights. Everybody was just sitting there like dead. Like yeah. it, it was like this adrenaline dump. It was incredible. It's like people always ask me what I do. I sell holy shit moments for a living. Right. That was the ultimate holy shit moment of all time. If you were at home, if you're in a bar or if you were here live tonight. There's no bigger holy shit than that. Absolutely. And that's why, let's just talk about this fight for the rest of the press conference. 100%. <laughs> so that's why Max Holloway is beloved and Gaethje. Max, how many times have you seen a fight where the guy wins, you know he's winning, they click the 10 second thing and the guy puts his hands up and they just run around, move around, uh-uh. He's got the fight won and he's in there with one of the most dangerous fucking fighters in the business, right? And he says, let's do this. And they both fucking oblige. And they go in and just start. One second left and a knockout like that. That's like movie shit. It's one of the greatest moments in UFC history. Without, it's, it's the fight of the year. If something beats that fight of the year, holy shit. I don't want to see the two guys that are involved in that fight at the end of the fight. I love it. What, you know, you talked about the BMF title, right? In the beginning, it was one and done, and, you know, people always did a gimmick or whatever. But like you said, what we saw out there tonight was insane. Does this change your perception of the I BMF never said it was a gimmick. Or? I fucking did it. Right? I didn't say it was a gimmick. I don't give a shit what anybody else says. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> tonight, that's what the fucking BMF is all about, and I'm glad we did that belt, and, yeah. So Max is calling it's for, like, to stay. a featherweight title, a lightweight title. He'd probably take them both in the same night. I mean, what do you, what do, you do with Max Holloway now? The guy is just an unbelievable star. Yeah, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll put something good together for him. I, I, and I agree with you. He was a star coming in here, and he took himself to an entirely different level after tonight, man. Tonight was a, a career-defining moment for a guy who has already accomplished so many great things, you know? One of, the greatest, one of the greatest featherweights of all time, and if not the greatest, and, and, and what he did tonight. Right. Like you and said. he's always talking about how he's got the best hands in the UFC, and then he does what he does tonight. So, yeah.
Fucking awesome, man. I, I can't I can't say enough good things about both of those guys and that fight. It would be easy to talk about only that. Last thing I'll ask, I just want to ask you about Alex Mejeda in the main event. A pretty good accomplishment there as well, yep. you know, defending that belt. What do you think about his performance? And he reveals, hey, man, Brazil would be nice. Heavyweight would be nice. Um, so what do you think of his performance, and where do you think of where he goes? Because he's becoming a huge star, too. Yeah. I, 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 uh, he looked awesome because I have a lot of respect for Jamal, too. And let me tell you what. Jamal didn't come in here, you know, thinking he – Jamal came to win. Thought he was going to win. And uh, the other thing, I don't know if you guys don't know this yet, but, but I'll tell you. He, I just found out when I went up in the octagon because I saw him messing around with his foot. He broke his toe two weeks ago. And uh, he fought tonight with a broken toe. I thought he broke his toe in the fight, and his team's like, no, he broke his fight two w weeks ago, and he's like, yeah, I, I ain't losing this opportunity for a fucking pinky toe. That's what he said. So um, props to him for that, too. And, yes, he's a big star. And I mean, Do you, do you, you know, entertain heavyweight? Incredible entertain for Brazil. Brazil? I, I, don't lie. Don't any of you fucking guys lie to me. Who thought Max, uh, Max was going to win tonight? Raise your hand. All right, yeah. I wrote it. Um, so when you think about him moving up to heavyweight, you know, you, you got Jones, you got Aspinall, and the list goes on and on in that heavyweight division. Heavyweight division is nasty. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's the right move for him. He looked damn good tonight in the division he's in. So I think you might want to stick around there for a minute. But I, I don't know. These are all things that we'll talk about for the next 15 Tuesdays, you know what I mean? So we'll get it figured out. Dana, you posted the finish to Max and Justin on your social media. So obviously that's a pay-per-view finish that you let people see for free. Do you do that just because you're so excited and you want to share it or because you think this can make Max into a massive star just using a separate... How do you not post that? I mean, I mean that, that, that needs to be shared. We posted it, ESPN posted it, we all posted it. Yeah. You probably all posted it too. <laughs> If you didn't, fucking post it. It's officially permission. Uh, in the co main event. I'm getting um, notes. This has never happened before. Do you want to read them? Huh. June 1st, Newark, New Jersey pay per view. Main event Islam versus Poirier. Co main event, five rounds. Strickland versus Costa. That's a bang June 29th. <laughs> Connor versus Chandler. <laughs> Woo! Five rounds, 170 pounds. Who's got the next question? I'll, I'll take it. Dana, thank you for just dropping that little nugget on us. Um, the Connor Chandler fight, obviously a fight that's been in the works for ages. Um, I know you've been working on it for ages. What finally got it across the line? And how exciting is it to finally get Connor back in the octagon? Well, it's not that we've been working on it for ages. Um, you know, th th there's all kinds of things that go on behind the scenes. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's all about timing. Chandler's been ready, but, but Connor hasn't been ready. Connor, I, we talked about this at one of the press conferences recently. He had a lot of uh, obligations that, that he had to deal with. What you don't want him doing is accepting a fight when he's got a ton of obligations and he can't train 100% for a fight. So here we are tonight. Obviously, he suffered that traumatic leg injury in his last fight, and he has said that when he comes back, it'll be the greatest comeback in sporting history. If he was to come back and win that fight, would it be one of the best comebacks, considering the, the, the injury he suffered? Well, I, th I think when you look at that injury, it's happened in, the, in, in UFC. We just saw Chris Weidman come back. Anderson came back from it. You saw, you've seen it in football. It's, it's probably one of the nastiest injuries that you could possibly get, you know? For some reason, you know, you see guys with broken arms all the time and stuff like that happens. It's hard for us as humans to wrap our brain around that bone breaking. That's just a, it's a nasty injury. And it's a rough recovery, too. It's a really rough recovery. I mean, any of you guys that saw, who's the football guy that did it? Uh, Rogers. Huh? Rogers. Bunch of football fans in here, huh? Uh, whatever his fucking name is. Anyway, if you saw the, the, the piece that they did on him trying to recover from that, from that injury, it's pretty nasty. Huh? Yeah, that was it, right? Alex Smith. Alex Smith? Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> Whoever, it was fucking nasty. Yeah, go yeah, ahead, sir. Here in the back. I want to talk to you about one of the most savage moments I've ever witnessed in my life. That moment where Pereira just moves Herb Dean away without even looking at him. He didn't even take his eyes off Jamal Hill. What did you think about that insane moment? And yeah. 10 seconds later, knocking him out, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. I thought you were talking about what he did after he knocked him out. Yeah. So, well, you, you, you left the part out. He got hit in the groin. He tried to stay. He's like, uh-uh. Uh, and then knocks him out. Yeah, I agree with you, sir. That was incredibly gangster. Congratulations on an absolutely amazing event. Thank you. I appreciate it. Dana White back here? Yes. Um, so as a fan, in, in a fan perspective, what meant most to you? And what did you like most? Uh, UFC 100, 200, or 300? 300 is tough to, to top. You know what I mean? Obviously, hitting 100 was a, you know. Lorenzo and I in the old days, we used to do five shows a year, right? I remember. So, he, when you think about, we always knew we wanted to do more events. Never do you think that you're going to end up doing Every time we would try to push and do more, everybody would say, you can't do it. That's too many fights. Then the, the, the fans and the media start to go, ah, oh, it's too much now. And it, when you're putting on great fights, there's never too many fights. As long as you're putting on good quality fights, there's never too many. So Lorenzo and I never dreamed in a million years we thought we'd be like 90 when we hit UFC 100. So when we did it as quick as we did, obviously that was a huge milestone for us. But it, I mean, in, in the history of me doing th this type of work, I, I don't know what tops 300. So mission accomplished. And from a promoter standpoint, do you ever just take a look back and say, okay, when I first became the president of the company, when we first purchased the company, uh, did you ever fathom that you would get to 300 events? I mean, and did you ever give yourself your own flowers for what you have accomplished and what you have done for the sport? I mean, every single major promotion fell by the wayside, especially the ones that were bigger at the time, maybe pride. But, you know, do you ever give yourself your flowers and give yourself a pat on the back for what you have done for the sport and I, just take a look back? And I, I say this all the time. I have no rear mirrors rearview mirrors in life. I just keep looking forward and, and, and I'm always thinking about um, how much bigger it can be and what else we need to do and I, I don't ever think, think about that stuff. Obviously, I'm very happy with what we've accomplished and, and uh, me and my team and, and you know, I, I think that every year that we keep beating what we did last year and we be, keep becoming more successful, me, me and my team become closer and stronger every year. And that's a very scary thing. And one more question for me. Uh, Mark Coleman, obviously with the B, uh, BMF title, he's now a hero in not just wrestling and the MMA community, but hero across the world. Uh, do you he's, guys a, he's a superhero. I love him. So uh, do you plan on continuing the relationship with him, especially because what he had done for the sport and part of that generation to help build the sport to what it is today? Nah, not that he just did what he did. I'm going to fucking kick him to the curb and never talk to him again. Nah, I'm done with Mark Coleman. <laughs> of course I'm going to have a great relationship with Mark Coleman. He's one of the nicest guys in the world. He's a legend in the sport. He just saved, you know, his parents from a burning building and went back in and tried to get the dog, um, you know, and, and, and could have died. You know, Mark, Mark's been through a lot of things in his life. He's, he's battled some demons, and uh, he won. And, or he's winning, I should say, right now. I don't know if you ever win battling demons, but he's winning. And uh, I think he's got a great relationship with his kids, and he's in a good place, man. So uh, I'm happy for him. It, it was an honor to honor him tonight. Awesome. Dana, just down Dana. to your right. Thank you. Dana? Yep. I believe you said after the power slide.
he's, he's easy to deal with, and we're back. Yeah, Con Connor's always been easy to deal with. He's, he's, a, uh, he's a smart dude. Mm. And, and, and Connor is a diehard UFC guy and will be till he retires and, and beyond. Mm. I believe Ian Gary said him and Colby have agreed to fight. Would that be a good fight for that Conor McGregor card? I don't know. We'll figure that out on many Tuesdays uh, over the next several weeks. Um, that's all the fights that I have for you now, the ones that I just announced. And just wondering if you saw Amanda Nunes' reaction. To I it. did. I like it. I thought she retired too soon anyway. I like that she's intrigued by this fight. I love it. And I love Amanda. Amanda and I have an incredible relationship, and um, I think she's, she's the GOAT in all sp combat sports, female. Um, so if Kayla can get in there and, and win a, a title, it would absolutely be fun to see her come back and, uh, and try to grab it again. Thank you. Thank you. Kind right yeah. right. yeah. of going off of that, what did you make of Kayla's performance? And on the flip side, what do you do with Holly after this performance? Yeah, she, she, she uh, let me tell you what. So going in against a legend like Holly, right, who's got tons of time in the octagon, and I don't care how, what level Kayla Harrison has, has competed at, I guarantee you she had some serious jitters tonight. And she came in there, she performed, and, and she literally put it to an absolute legend in all of combat sports. So uh, obviously a big night for her and a big win. And uh, I would love to see Holly retire. Cyborg also tweeted that she wants the winner of Amanda. And yeah. Um, uh, and um, in the co-main event, uh, did you see Jan Jaunan? It uh, looked like she got choked out at the end of the first round, and then she still got up. And she definitely did. Yeah, I mean, she was. I mean, an another gangster uh, fight. Th those two. The problem for those two is was the fight that was before it. Um, those those guys both fought a great fight tonight, and uh, she was choked out. But she stood up and she walked back to her corner, and you know, yeah. And what did you make of uh, Jalen's walk-off KO? That I know, happen? man. He's going to regret that one for the next few weeks. Uh, beautiful shot. Should have jumped on him and finished him. And, uh, yeah, I feel sorry for the kid. And then uh, Diego Lopes uh, wants to fight ja June 29th against Movzar, and then he wants to fight in the sphere uh, against someone like Ilya or Brian or someone like that. I love it. I love it. We'll see what happens. I, I listen. How badass is that kid? How fun and exciting is he? That kid's going to be an absolute superstar. So, I, I, listen, when guys say, hey, I want to fight here, there, and everywhere, I, I love that shit. So I'm looking forward to it. Dana, any uh, update going back to Canada at all? Canadian fans are wondering. Uh, not a, uh, right here off the top of my head. I can't think of any. We're, we're, no. Yes, yeah. we will, but no. Not, not right here right now off the top of my head. Dana, yeah. um, I know you talked about UFC, UFC Hawaii for a long time. You said it's kind of impossible, but I know that you're looking to go to Hawaii for power slap, but yep. with, Max, with Max Holloway being such a legend, like, do you feel like it's, you have to bring him to Hawaii? Let me ask you a question. I have, uh, how many employees do we have now? 550? You think all 550 of my employees don't want to go to fucking Hawaii and do a fight? Believe me, we do. I want to go to Hawaii. Hawaii has been good to this company and to this sport for a very long time. Um, Max Holloway is an abs. I mean, we're talking tonight. The kid went to a whole nother level tonight, and he was already a superstar. They don't have the infrastructure for a fight over there. Just, we can't do it. Even if it's just like a, a little fight night, a cramped little apex event, like in, in Hawaii, like, wouldn't that the atmosphere just be off the wall for Max Holloway? Yeah, but there's more to it than that. There's more to it than just going and doing a little... You're not going to go to Hawaii and do an apex fight night. You know what I mean? Might as well fucking stay here and let him fly over here. and It just it doesn't make sense. I got you. What were you going to say? I was going to say Bellator has had uh, Hawaii events. Bellator could put on a fucking fight in the parking lot. <laughs> Dude, I can't even believe you just said that. PFL Ator could... You, you know, PFL Ator was here on Friday. Did anybody know that? You're the media guys. I didn't know till fucking Friday. They were selling tickets, buy two, get two free. I'm not busting on them. That's a fucking fact. They put out a, a memo, buy two, get two free. You're having a bad fucking week if those are the memos you're putting out. Hey, Dana. There were more people in my fucking green room tonight than there were at the fight. If 
finally, uh, Bo Nickel, what do you think of his performance? Incredible. Looked great. The thing you got to understand about that kid, he's, uh, he's 5-0. and Fought a guy with 15 fights. And, and, he, and he went out there. He was a fucking 2001 favorite and looked like it. You know what I mean? Um, he's got a lot of pressure on him right now. He's got, uh, you know, all these expectations. And I think that some of the people feel like He's getting, uh, you know, th this, this preferential treatment. No, the kid, we believe in the kid. We think that he's going to be a stud, and we think he's going to be a star. So he, he's, he's handling this pressure really, really well. You know what I mean? He's got the type of pressure on him that after he wins against the guy who has 15 fights and he has five, and he finishes them, he says, thumbs down. I said, kid. You got, you got to stop putting that kind of pressure on yourself. You just come out and do what you do. Just keep fucking doing what you do. Keep winning. You look great. They they block out all this fucking bullshit and noise. And Yes. Um, going back to Amanda and Kayla, would you ever consider doing that fight as a BMF title fight for women? Um, well, if they did it, it would, it would be for the belt. It would be for the championship. But neither of them hold a title right now, so... Well, they won't fight right now. I, th I think what Amanda was saying, interesting. Let's see how this plays out. If she wins the belt, then maybe I come back. That's what I read from it. I, didn't, I don't think she was saying, hey, let's BMF this. Uh, I think she wants to come back and, and maybe see if she can regain her title. And, and then it's one of those things. And she's brilliant. She's brilliant for this because she's already looked at as the GOAT, right? And then you have this scary new woman that comes in and, and she destroys Holly Holm. Can she win the title? Can she get through Pena and, 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 and Raquel? And if she does, for her to come back again and then possibly win this fight, it, it's, it's impossible to deny her. Right. And there was also a moment where Armin, it looked like he was punching somebody in the crowd during his walkout. Yeah, you might not want to hang over the uh, things and grab people when they're walking out. These guys are all fucking piped up and, and whatever, and I'm sure we're probably going to get sued. I'm, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that on Monday, too. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Dana right over here. Hi. Dana in the back. Yep, wherever you are, I see you. Yeah, there you go. Jira uh, Prohoshka with a big pop from the crowd and got back in the win column. Obviously, he's still highly ranked. Can you talk a little bit about what your plans may be for him going forward? I have no clue. He, 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 you, know, you know what? I feel bad for those two. That was the fight of the night until the BMF fight happened. Uh, that was an, another... That, let's talk about that fight. Thank you, sir. <laughs> These poor kids, they went out there and fucking went to war, man. I, I mean, uh, Rackett looked incredible. He was picking him apart. Prohaska comes back and wins the fight. You know, place is going crazy. Unbelievable fight. That was fight of the night until the insanity happened, you know, for the BMF. So, um, yes, the, both those guys looked incredible. They both came out and, and laid it all out. And uh, I'm happy for uh, Prohaska. He, 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 uh, he, he's an absolute set. Plus, talk about leg kicks. I mean, his leg was done. He was done, and uh, he pulls out the win in that fight. Uh, real quick on Zhang Wei Li. Obviously, she's been on a roll for quite a while now. We know there was a China event that got rescheduled. Is there a possibility we could bring her back to China for an event, or do you see her maybe in the U.S.? Still? I have no idea. We're, we're, we're working on a bunch of other uh, places that we're going to go this year. I don't know if China is on the schedule yet or not. We're, we're still kind of mapping out the end of the year. Thank you. Thank over you. Here. Yep. Now that uh, Connor and Chandler is official, was there any talk about showing like a graphic or video in front of the arena in, in the, with the fans? Or is that, was that too last minute? Yeah, no. That's all internet bullshit. Internet <laughs> bullshit. And uh, obviously, Aljamain Sterling made his featherweight debut today against Calvin Cater. While the fans didn't find it the most aesthetic or pleasing, I want to just get your thoughts on his debut at 145 pounds. Anytime you move up weight and you win, especially against a tough guy like Calvin, and I thought that... Uh, Here's what I will say about Aljo. I thought that uh, he made Calvin look slow, you know? Not, not a fan favorite on UFC 300, but uh, moving up in weight and taking on a tough, gritty guy like Calvin is, is, is always a good win. And speaking of fan favorites on UFC 300, I know you've been a part of many great fights and moments. Where do you rank those final 10 seconds between Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje amongst the moments you've seen in person? The whole fight, let alone the 10 seconds. But the last 10 seconds is, is the type of... Arturo Gotti shit that I always talk about that, that fight fans love. There's a reason 
that people love Gaethje and Holloway the way that they do, and that's it right there. When you're a fight fan, that, that's like a dream, two guys like that. Two guys like that squaring off and, and facing each other. Broken nose, fucking eye pokes, uh, legs all busted up. Guys way out in head. There's no denying who's, you know, you sit there and go, Holloway won this fight. He says, let's do it. Let's go right in the middle. And they both do it. You, you, you'll see a lot of guys that'll go, oh, we're going to go right in the middle. We're going to do this. And then the fight starts. And eh, maybe not. Right? And there's a lot of guys that try to do the, come on, let's go do this. When you have two savages like those two that go out and just do it, it's just, you, 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 you couldn't script that. If you saw it in a movie, you'd call bullshit on it. Last one for me. I see you wearing the UFC PI Mexico shirt. They just announced the UFC Academy over there with 19 athletes from Mexico and Latin America representing. So how big is that for the next step of continued growth and MMA out there in Mexico and Latin America? Yeah, it, it went really well down there. The combine that they did and basically the team that worked down there in the combine came back and told me, holy shit, wait, wait till you see what's going to happen down here in the next couple of years, which I already knew. Um, yeah, it's incredible. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the future with, uh, with, with Mexico. Dana, you Thank talk, you. You talk a little bit about that last 10 seconds with uh, Justin and Max. We saw a little bit of that with Jim Miller and Bobby Green, and Jim Miller obviously didn't get it done tonight, but this historic streak of 100, 200, 300, um, how impressive is like his longevity and what he did tonight? Yeah, great point. Great point. And, and again, two more Warriors that went out tonight and, and just went for it. Um, and, and yeah, he, he was on a bad receiving end of that, of that, of that Bobby Green fight. He, he, I just saw a picture of him in the, in the hospital right now. His face is not good. Yeah, there's going to be some people that are sore over the next couple of weeks, man. It, everybody, everybody showed up tonight. Yep. And um, I talked to Islam Makachev a few weeks ago, and he was very adamant. He just wanted to fight June 1st. He didn't care who. Did you have the Poirier fight done coming into tonight, or was there a possibility if you know one of these lightweight fights went smooth and those guys wanted to turn around, were they in the running? There were a couple other options, yeah. We were looking at other people, too. Okay. And I appreciate you dropping PFL a tour. I actually coined that one. So. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Dana, to your right. Yeah. Yeah. The pacing of uh, all the way over to your... Hi. Hey there. The pacing of the show was a little bit different tonight, and I suspect it's because you had an enormous level of advertisers that were being crammed into the broadcast. Can you compare maybe 200 to where you are now and how different it is? How did, you, actually, how did you feel the pacing was different than it a regular was a, show? It felt a little bit slower. Really? It felt a little bit slower, both I, in the... I, I had them. Have you ever been to a boxing event, ma'am? Listen, listen. <laughs> There's fucking 45 May. minutes to an hour between fights. The walk-in is an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, the list goes on and on. The, I, I thought that the pace of the show tonight was, um, w was just like any other night. Um, obviously, we have advertisements and commitments th that we have, but we keep a pretty, pretty fast pace when we do fights. But in retrospect, how do you feel about the difference between, let's say, 200 and 300 and how much easier it is to be in the marketplace as UFC, as a combat sports operation, and having those kind of partnerships? I mean, it hasn't been that long ago where you couldn't even go to New York City. No, you're right. And, and it took, uh, you know, when I was talking about Power Slap, Power Slap has been around for 14 months. They have more uh, sponsors than UFC did in seven years. So obviously, you know, the early days of, um, of, of building this company in the sport are, are a lot different than today. I mean, uh, and that's one of, the, one of the biggest pieces of growth for the company has been sponsorship. It's massive and continues to grow. Uh, just one more for me. So we're talking about uh, having UFC in the sphere for Mexican Independence Day weekend. Recently, Matchroom has floated the idea of perhaps bringing Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano as their rematch into the sphere uh, maybe as early as June. How do you feel about that? And I know that it's been a big deal to be the first combat sports operation to go into the sphere. I love Eddie Hearn. I consider him a friend. Ain't happening. Sorry, Eddie. Love you, buddy. You can go in the sphere in October. <laughs> Dana, down here, Dana, too, right? Uh, you said uh, earlier this week that you think that in the future, eventually, you would be able to top this event because you have a history of topping your biggest events. Do you think, after <laughs> seeing tonight, that that's going to be possible? That's a great question, brother. And here we are again. I say this all the time. How do we beat 
300. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question, but we're going to find out. You were very generous with the news of uh, 301, 302, and 303. Um, any update on 304, which is potentially rumored for the UK? <laughs> which is the, the UK fight? Yes. Yeah, no, we, we have nothing done yet, but I, I pretty much said already we're going to Manchester. We don't have a deal done. We don't have anything done yet, but we're going to Manchester. And let me just remind you all what it's like to be in Manchester. One of the greatest events that I've ever been to was when we first went into Manchester. That, that place is awesome. The, the, the fans, the crowd, you know, I'm looking very forward to that. You, you, you mentioned, obviously, that time that was 2.04, I believe, but that was at 3 o'clock in the morning. Will it be at a normal time in the UK? We don't have a deal done yet. I, I don't know anything yet. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, uh, currently, uh, Whaley and Yan's fight uh, attract over 30 billion views on social media back in China. Uh, from you, from you perspective, 30, 30 billion, 30 billion views among social media. So from your perspective, how big is the fight, you know, com, uh, impact to the Asian marketing? For Great you question. Sir, where are you from? From China. I figured that, but where are you from? <laughs> oh, I'm from Migu, China Migu. Okay, got it. So nobody knows better than you how hard it is to trend number one in, in, in China, right? We've been number one for two days trending in China. Exactly. Which is unbelievable. And yes, th this was a massive sporting event in China. This is like the first time we've done well in China. This is the first time we've really broken through uh, in China. And, and, and like, I didn't know the 30 billion. Uh, so thank you. Yeah, it's, it's been incredible. No problem, sir. Yeah. Uh, just follow up with the question. It's like, a, you know, uh, probably not this year, but w how soon you want to bring the UFC back to China after? You know, yeah, somebody asked me that earlier. I don't know exactly when we're heading back there, but a night like tonight doesn't hurt, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all good. I'm excited. Thank you, Dana. Appreciate Thank you, sir. One more? Last yeah, one. Right here. What's up, um, I want to ask you about the in, um, in entertainment environment with the uh, bracelets and everything, everyone on their wrists and everything like that with lights going along with the show, the atmosphere and stuff like that. What did you make of it? I made it. <laughs> What's the question? What did I make of it? I made it. In terms That's what of we like do. Your, when, your, when your I expectation versus the reality of it. It was awesome. So you know what I did during one of the fights? I, uh, you know, people always ask me this question. I watch the monitor. I watch very little of the actual live. I'll look up every once in a while, and I'm on my phone the whole fucking time. People think I'm like, like I don't give a shit about the fights. All I care about is the production, the live production in-house. Um and the television production. So tonight, I left during one of the fights and came back to my green room and watched it. We have a big screen back there, and I watched it on TV. And with the lights and all, it was, it was incredible. It, lo it looked incredible on TV. Um, just like I always say about Power Slap and obviously UFC, the production is incredibly important to me. It's, 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 it's uh, the only things that I really focus on on a daily basis is finding young up and coming talent, making sure we put on the right fights in the right place at the right time, and in house uh, live television production and uh, uh, I mean in house production and, and, and live television production. Fo that's what I focus on literally every day in the office um, and other little bullshit here and there, but that's my main focus. So when, when we have an event like tonight and you look at Young talent that's on the card tonight, how they performed, um, how the thing looked in-house and how it felt, the energy and the buzz, and how it looked on television, right? And then you look at the fights that delivered tonight. You couldn't have a bigger fucking home run than tonight. So and a quick I hope I answered your question. You did. And a quick follow-up about Dreykus. Um, he was seen in the crowd and everything like that. Do you have any plans on where you're going to have him, who he's going to fight, if it's going to be Izzy or the winner of Whitaker, Chamayev, anything like that? We're working on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.